Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the 3D game programming tutorial series. Last time, we set up our basic interaction world. Now, we have all of our basic functions in place so that we know about every entity that has a transform and a collider. But that is not all we need. As you see from our master plan, we do need to put everything of a transform and collider in an interaction world, but we also need to find all the intersections between those entities. So that is what we are going to be doing in this video. Let's get to it. Step one, our interaction world needs a method to actually, you know, process interactions. So we're going to add that. We're going to say void process interactions. There you go. And the idea is we'll just call this once every time we update or something like that. And then we'll process interactions like that. So we're going to take in some delta so we know how much time has passed since we last processed all the interactions. And that's the general picture. So as far as implementing this goes, there's a few steps. So I'm going to create interaction world, or I'm going to open interaction world.cpp. There we go. And I'm just going to, yeah, let's copy and paste this so that I can easily, there we go. And this is interaction world process interactions. Perfect. So what we're going to do here, there's a few things we need to do for this to work. So we're just going to sort of outline the general algorithm. First thing we need to do, we need to remove entities to remove. Because I mean, that's how we're removing entities. We're adding them to this list with the idea that sometime later we'll actually remove them. So. Before we process any interactions, we need to make sure all the entities we don't care about anymore are gone. The next step is the same thing we in the, in the picture. We need to go through every single entity in this list and determine its interaction with every other entity. That's a bit of a problem, and let me show you why. So right now in our interaction world, like I said, we're going to go through every entity and find its intersection with every other entity. So let's say, for example, these are our AABBs. These are the bounding boxes that we'll be dealing with. And if I want to determine the interactions for this one, if I do it naively, I'll have to go through every single one of these other bounding boxes and test, does it intersect? Same thing for this one. Same thing for this one. Same thing for this one. And as you can see, it's quadratic performance because every entity needs to be tested against every other entity. That's not good, especially once we have lots and lots of these in here. So there's a few ways we can speed this up. One of the most popular ways is to put it in a spatial data structure, like say an octree. And that's a good way to do it, and we will probably end up doing something like that later in the series. Right now though, that's a little bit overkill. Implementing something like an octree well isn't trivial, and it's not that simple. So we're going to go with an easier approach that also tends to work pretty well, and that is the sort and sweep algorithm. The way this works is really dead simple, and that's what makes it so great. It's a very easy way to do this. What we do is we sort the AABBs by their minimum x value, so their minimum on x. And so the idea is, if I'm in this AABB, for example, and I want to determine its interactions. Once the list is sorted, I can take advantage of that to easily eliminate anything I don't want to. So basically, I'll iterate through the list, and as long as the minimum on x is less than this AABB's maximum on x, well, then I know that's a potential collision. But as soon as I hit this entity, I know this entity's minimum on x is greater than this AABB's maximum on x, so therefore, they can't possibly be interacting, and I can stop there. It's a little bit weird sounding when spoken out loud, but once you see it in code, it, it should make sense right away. It's, not, it's very simple. So if we're testing this AABB, we'll iterate through the list until we get this far in space. That means we only have to test between these two if they're potentially colliding. For this one, same thing. Only have to test against this one. For this AABB, this middle one right here, I'll only test up to here, so I'll only test against these two, including one that actually does intersect. And you see, much fewer, there's very 
very few intersection tests per AABB going on here. And that's the idea. We can easily eliminate loads of these intersection tests right away. So that's what we're going to be doing. It's very simple. It's not perfect, as you can see. It's still leaving a good amount to be desired, but it's way better than doing nothing. So, continuing our outline, we need, once we've removed entities, what do we need to do to implement this sort and sweep algorithm? Well, here's what we need to do. The first thing we're going to want to do is, first off, get rid of that because it's annoying me, but then we want to find highest variance axis for AABBs. Basically, which axis are they most spread out on? Because that is the axis I should sort on to get the minimum amount of, well, intersection tests. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to find the highest variance axis for AABBs. Then we're going to sort AABBs by min on highest variance axis. There you go. And then once we've done all this, once we've gone through the list, we've determined highest variance axis, we've sorted by that, then very simple. Then just go through the list, test intersections in range. There you go. With that, the outline is finished. Let's implement. For removing all the entities, I'm going to have a new method for that. So this is going to be revo avoid method remove entities. And this is how it's going to work. We're going to go down here. We're going to say interaction world remove entities. I'm not going to implement it just yet. And right here, we're just going to call it. Boom. That solves that problem. Next, find highest variance axis for AABBs. We're also going to have a method for this. So int find highest variance axis. And again, we're going to have some implementation of this. And we're just going to call it. We're going to say int axis equals find highest variance axis. Boom. For sorting the AABBs, we're ultimately going to use std sort, but I'm not going to go through and implement that just yet because that will require an extra function that we pretty much will have to implement, so I'm not going to worry about it. And going through the list is going to be the main content of this function. Now, to help implement remove entities, I'm going to take a slight detour into data structures to array.hpp. We're going to be changing how we implement this. Rather than define it as just a macro, we're actually going to make it a custom class. So template type name t class array of, of type t inherits from public std vector of type t. So this should ultimately end up doing the same thing, just slightly different syntax, because now we're defining it as a subclass rather than just directly defining. So array sub t, the constructor, is just going to inherit from std vector t. There we go. That's all. And I also believe I need a constructor that takes in a size n. Yeah, just for the initial size. And these are all the constructors I've used so far, so I'm not going to worry too much about anything beyond this. All right, and a quick test build showed me I just made a slight syntax error. You don't put the template type right there, so sorry about that. And I also forgot interaction world in front of here. But other than that, this does work just like before. So you might wonder, hey Benny, why are we doing this? Because if you remember from when we implemented the ECS, we had a particular technique for removing things. It was swapping the element to remove with the last element of the array, and then popping the array once. That's what we're going to do here. We're going to implement that as a feature. I'm going to call it just void swap remove. I'm going to take in some size t index. And yeah, it'll be just a generic function of any array. And this way, it'll make implementing removing a lot easier because we don't need to re-implement this every single time. So here it is, the last time we will need to implement the swap remove. As far as the implementation of this goes, 
it's going to be very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to take two values. The first is whatever is at this index. We're also going to care about whatever is at size minus one, whatever's the end, right? And what we're going to do is we're just going to call std swap on these. So we're swapping whatever's at this index with whatever we're supposed to remove with whatever's at the end. And then we just call pop back. There you go. A very simple O of one way of removing something anywhere in the array, as long as you don't care about the fact that it's going to change up the order a bit. But that's the point. So with that, now we can implement remove entities a lot more efficiently. So we're going to go through the entire entities array. I equals zero, I is less than entity dot size, I plus plus. There we go. And here's the logic. What we're going to do is for every entity, we're going to go through the list of entities to remove. This is a double for loop, but the presumption is we're not going to be removing a lot of entities per frame, so about really per call, so this is probably not going to be too much of an issue. But either way, the logic here is if we need, rather, if these entities are the same, so if entities sub i is equal to entities to remove sub j, if this, then what we're going to do is a couple things. Firstly, obviously this is the entity we need to remove, so we're going to go ahead and say entities dot swap remove i there we go same logic for entities to remove though we also want to swap remove the entity from the list of entities to remove you might wonder hey benny why do we want to remove it from the list of entities to remove well that's because well we've already found it we don't need to keep checking for it every for every entity because we know we already found and removed this entity we don't have to look for it anymore but here's the thing what does swap remove do? It moves whatever entity was at the end of the list to this index of the list. So actually, once this happens, we need to check this particular entity index again. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to have a do while loop. So while did remove, I have just a Boolean variable called that, sure. Bool did remove starts off equal to false. Every iteration did remove gets set to false. But, sorry, wrong tab. If we do remove an entity, then did remove equals true. And we're going to break out of the main for loop and go through again. If we end up not removing, then we'll exit. And this is safe because even if it happens, we keep swapping and swapping and swapping, swap removing over and over. Eventually, entities to remove is going to be empty, so this will just be false. So this is a safe for loop. We're not going to end up in an infinite loop anywhere here. And there. So this should work. This should go through the entire list. And one more thing, though, I should do just a quick check for is if did remove is say if did remove and entity to remove that size is equal to zero, then we're going to exit. Though actually, I need to be careful of that, so I'm not going to do it just yet. So what I'm going to do here is first off at the start, if entities to remove dot size is equal to zero, we're just going to do an easy return. And actually here I could do the return because, yeah, so here I can re just return. And the reason it's safe here is because the thing I'm going to do at the end is entities.remove.clear. We're going to just remove anything we didn't find because obviously we don't have those entities to begin with. So we can just get rid of them at this point. And that's safe to do here because here we know the list is empty. So there you go. This is logically correct. This shouldn't waste any computation time if we don't have anything to remove. And yeah, there you go. And small change to array.hpp, what we want to do 
is we don't just want the size, we need to specify this object subsize and this object arrow pop back. Otherwise, you're going to run into some compiler errors. And just like that, we have the first key piece to processing every interaction in the world. Now, all we need is finding the highest variance axis and sorting them, and we should be pretty much good to go. But how do we do that? Find out next time! I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned, and I will see you all in the next video. Don't forget there's an awesome Betty Discord, and if you want early access to the next videos, you can become a patron on Patreon. Thank you very much to all my patrons, and very especially those listed in the video description. I will see you all in the next video.